Uh, I am not going to use the microphone. I tend not to. Microphones to me don't get along very well. Uh, I am uh, the CEO of First in Technologies, Joseph Madden. And this is Chief Strategy Officer Daniel Weissman. Just so you all know, this is a little different than um, the other presentations here. This is not a software company. This is an industrial company. So setting the stage for that. Uh, First in Technologies was started in 1942. We are a precision optics company. We're mostly in defense. Uh, we have a 70-year legacy on the Gulf Coast of Mississippi. We have a very proud legacy of creating jobs here, being a manufacturer right here in Mississippi. Uh, we have made a strategic decision to essentially move away from contract manufacturing. And the reason why is uh, some people will kind of either groan or kind of nod their head, but Elon Musk, I think, has a right. Con uh, manufacturing is hard, and that is absolutely the truth. Manufacturing is hard. So we're moving away from contract manufacturing. Uh, April of this year, we have signed an exclusive license. Oh. We have signed an exclusive license with the Army Research Lab, DEFCOM, to introduce a new, oh, I'll let that go. To introduce a new spherical beam splitter, and this is a beam splitter technology. Uh, for yeah, 2020, yeah. Yeah, we'll get into that. Um, sure. The beam splitter is, I have one to show everybody. Um, just very quickly, how we envision our strategic shift uh, in the first quarter of next year, we're aiming to become the only North American producer of a critical component called ball lens. That's right. Uh, we're sourcing the equipment, we have the deal set up. Um, by 2023's third quarter, uh, we want to begin here for beam splitter sales. And again, we'll get into what that is in a little bit. Um, and then by 2024, we want to move away from making components for other people's sensor equipment, which both of these uh, ball lenses and beam splitters are, and start making our own sensors and sell them. So our management team, uh, new Chief Executive Officer, Daniel Weissman, Chief Strategy Officer, James Torrey, our Director of Research and Development, and Jeremy Powell, he's our Production Director. Uh, we, our customers, as I said, we're about 60-40 defense. Certainly we have some commercial about Raytheon. I'm sure everyone's heard of Raytheon here. Um, we also, uh, we coat the uh, tow sensor. We're the only company that, that does it. Um, we're very, very proud of that. Um, this, is, this is the tow missile. This is the tow missile. It's an anti-tank missile. Um, this is what is going over to Ukraine right now. Um, so we're very, very proud of that. What we do now is thin film coating. Um, that's basically, uh, Basically, we're putting layers on optical components. Um, it allows the components to see certain right. wavelengths of light and to not see other ones so they can hold in on what they're looking for. Exactly. That's, the, that's right. a critical process. So what we're doing now is certainly contract manufacturing. Where we want to go is ball lens. We want to be the only North American manufacturer of ball lens. And ball lens and spherical beam splitter are tied completely together. That is what we are aiming to do as we go into 2023. Uh, we have our license with the Army Research Lab. This is an exclusive license on a patent that ends in 2030 at the end of this decade. All right, so this is, this is a pretty straightforward slide. Um, it's the where are you and where are you going? Slide. So right now what we do is uh, thin film coating, which is basically a giant chamber that's kind of like an oven that you put a piece of glass in, and you layer different chemicals and components on top of it, and then it becomes a sensor component. Um, we do that, we turn little pieces of glass into things that make sensors see. Um, we don't want to do that anymore for other people. We want to start making our own standardized products because it's just easier and the margins are higher. So by 2023, 20, quarter one, we want to be generating revenues from thin coating um, and ball lens manufacturing. Later on in 23, that's when we get into the beam splitters. And I actually have a prototype here in my pocket. Now, what a beam splitter is, is a little marble. This is a spherical beam splitter, the very first in the world, actually, this is our prototype. And what this does is allow us to shine a light beam through it, and then it reflects somewhere else in the room. Let's see, is it showing up? Well, you'll see, it's a little marble. Um, what a ball lens is, is a little marble that's a lens. What a beam splitter here, a spherical beam splitter is, is two marbles that have been cut in half, coated, 
sandwiched together so that they now reflect the beam of light. And let's see if we're getting it. All right. Is it showing up anywhere? Right, we're we'll learning light. Anyway, we'll show you guys later. Um, this is what we want to be moving towards. Uh, the next slide will explain why. Long story short, the margins are much higher. Um, you put one of these little balls into an assembly with some computer equipment around it, now you have a sensor. So that's what a sensor is. Now, you can see here essentially what the per unit pricing is. You can see contract manufacturing. Go right to the bottom and look at sensors. That's where we're moving towards. Because instead of contract manufacturing, we're making other companies' products. Now we're making our own. So as it stands right now, if you guys need something, if you're a sensor producer and you need um, a piece of precision uh, made glass that's coated, you come to us, uh, you ask us to make you a bid, you send an RFQ our way, we make you a bid, we go back and forth in pricing, we go get material pricing, we go figure out how to do it, we make it for you, then we ship it, it's all custom. What we wanna be doing is standardizing our products so that we're pumping out ball lenses, which have similar margins to contract manufactured products, and then when they're sitting on a shelf, um, this critical component, that currently is only made in China. And as we all know, the China trade seems to be rather drying up pretty quickly. Um, we can become uh, the only supplier of those ball lenses pretty quickly. After that, the beam splitters, which are basically an advanced ball lens that reflects light, uh, the margins are even higher. And after we figure out how to make sensors out of them, the margins are as high as we, as we want to price them. This is all, uh, on the right there you see, we can, we'll show you guys offline, but this is basically, these markets that we're in and trying to get into are in the $15 billion range, yes. give or take. So very large markets. The sensor market is about 10 times that. It's pushing to 200 billion right now. Um, and there's a lot of demand, both civilian and military. Yes. All right, so the use cases for ball lens and SPS. And we broke this down, LIDAR, missiles, fiber optics, sensors. So again, this clearly shows the direction that we're heading in. Everyone right now in their phone, there's a beam splitter. Computers have beam splitters. But in order for the beam splitter, you essentially need ball lines. And that is essentially what we're going towards. Uh, and here you can see LIDAR. I think everyone knows what LIDAR is. It goes in vehicles. Yeah. What LiDAR does at a practical level takes, I'll show you guys later, but it takes one of these little beams, so it spins it around real fast as a, as a beam of light is going through it, shines it all around. As it's being reflected back, it's sending data to the car. That's what allows your car to magically see all around it. Exactly. So that's a practical example of what we're doing. All right, so where we are now is we do thin film coating. Um, we are right now seeking, uh, we're actually closing the deal uh, to purchase the only ball lens equipment that is available in North America. And essentially, if you look at Rochester, New York, which is one of the major hubs, it's really the, I think you could say, it's basically where optics was founded. Yep. Um, all the ball right coating and all the ball lens manufacturing went right over to China. Now, you certainly have companies here that have an LLC presence, but most of the ball lens are being manufactured in the People's Republic of China. Um, and in order for us to get to the spherical beam splitter, first, we're, we're going to be manufacturing ball lens. Yes, that is critical. And one of the reasons it's critical is because, as I'm sure everybody here can, can conjecture, uh, the DOD is not very happy when their Chinese-made products going into their weapon systems. That's right. So if we're going to be selling these into Raytheon's weapon systems, we need to be able to manufacture them right here in the United States. Exactly. Current status, we have basically the, the equipment um, that we're looking to acquire is sitting in uh, Rochester, New York. The reason it hasn't been brought it back online up there is because electricity is about twice as expensive up there as it is here. Um, it's about four times as expensive in Europe as it is here. This is why Mississippi is quickly becoming a manufacturing hub. Um, also, the Navy's access to the Gulf Coast really helps. Uh, so that's that's what we're looking. We're uh, getting the equipment for the ball lens, um, and then on the spherical beam slitter front, um, we've got an operational prototype, um, and we're showcasing it. All right. So our current needs: we need to upgrade our thin film coating. Uh, we also need to um, 
essentially move our ball lens equipment, and then from there we can start producing spherical beam splitters. All right, so this is Mississippi job creation. The short version is nine to 14 jobs in 2023 if we do this right. Yes. And we're running a little low in time, so we'll, yeah. we'll speed run here. Um, but we need people to make these things. We need people to assemble these things. We need people to inspect these things. And we need scientists to figure out um, how this energy is going to work, along with Mr. Torrey, who has uh, had many good questions already here. Our strategic goals, uh, let's start from the bottom. We want to stop contract manufacturing because it's messy, it's slow, it's, it's kind of a pain in the neck. We want to start sales of standardized products, and we want to move up the value chain um, into the higher margin uh, equipment that we're selling. And where we are now, we're essentially for growth capital, where we're going for 2023 is we're going to essentially end contract manufacturing, the legacy business that we have, and then going into 2024, we're going to essentially expand our coating sales because we're upgrading our thin film coaters and also basically ball lens and SBS sales. And that is it. And I just want to say one thing about Mississippi and the reason we bought this company. Mississippi um, is going to become an industrial hub, and especially on the coast because it is the closest to energy. Yep. Our, a lot of our competition in Rochester, New York, Let's let this go. I'll bleed into my Q&A time. A lot of our competitors in Rochester, New York, what they are paying in electricity is massive. We can undercut, and we are very happy to be continuing our legacy here in Mississippi. So I've opened up the floor for Danny Moore to ask questions. No, yeah, please do that. I have a question. Please. Yes. So was your contract manufacturing growing? Um, it can be. It's the problem with contract manufacturing is um, it's very administrative heavy. So if we wanted to hire ten sales guys to go out and get every RFQ in the world, we could do it. It's a pain in the neck. There's capacity issues. You're constantly have to scale up and down your workforce. You get a big order, you scale up. It ends, then you have to scale back down. It's just not a stable way of operating the business. And we are revenue positive, so yeah. we are generating revenue. Yeah. So the sensors you're going to make in the future, are you selling to the same people that are contract manufacturing? Uh, yeah, we're yes. making their components right now. So we want to stop making other people's sensor components and start making our own sensors. And did, did those sensors have a lot of IP around them that you were privy to? Yep. Okay, so you have to be careful. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Um, however, what we want to do specifically is make sensors out of these little uh, spherical beam is splitters. Is that new and improved or something? Yeah. Yes. yes. Well, the difference awesome. is here's a traditional beam splitter, it's a cube. You can't really move a cube in place because it messes up everything else. Right. Like, it bumps into things. If it's a marble, it's not really changing its position at all when you move it. Well, the world's not square anymore. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, it's no longer <laughs> heavy. <to> square. <laughs> yes, sir. How much capital are you looking to raise? Uh, we'll take that offline yeah, we'll take it off in the six figures. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is a long-term business that's been on the Mississippi Gulf Coast for a long time. How long have you guys owned it and is it profitable currently? Yes, it is profitable. Uh, we one year, one year. Yes, we purchased the company in November of 2021. So, company's been in business for 70 years. Right. All right. Thank you very much, Thank everyone. You. Appreciate it.